Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and today we are here to talk about lossless scaling, download more FPS. Um, well, the reason I'm talking about this is because on every video that I talk about the LSS3 or frame generation, there is people that swear by this software. Like they say, this is the best thing ever created. But what is lossless scaling exactly? Well, the software started as a way to, let's say, re not reconstruct, but like make an image of lower resolution, higher resolution. For example, if you have a 4K monitor and you play a game on 1440p and you want to expand it to 4K um, because you don't have the uh, GPU power, then the software will do it using uh, spatial techniques like FSR1, um, XPR, or some proprietary or created um, a scaling option that the software includes. So that's basically the the, the main reason for, for this. So, um, you the, the only limitation is that you have to play uh, in window mode. So the game has to be either in Windows borderless or a window, but never full screen. Otherwise, the, the software won't work. This creates a couple of issues because the way the software works make it difficult for it to be recorded because the change of images is created not in the GPU, but after by the second software that like takes that input and put it on the screen. So recording it is complicated because even all OBS, when you try to record it with the newest version of the API that the software uses, it only sees the original image, not the new uh, rescale one. So it was a little bit tricky to try to get the software on screen to show what it's doing. Um, also, the, the software, uh, I, I don't think it does like a great, uh, it's not bad, I will say, it is, of course, but you know, it's not great. It's not DLSS or FSR. Remember, this is using a spatial information, but it can come useful for many cases. For example, if you're playing like pixel art games and maybe the game doesn't scale well to 4K or it uses bilinear filtering, then you can use nearest neighborhood by this software and have perfectly razor sharp pixels instead of having, you know, soft them or so on. So there is a couple of options where the uh, software comes um, interesting. So where do you get this software? You're getting on Steam, okay? It costs like, I don't know, I pay 549 uh, pounds, but I think it's uh, probably like seven or eight dollars, okay, around that. So, but the biggest um, reason people bring this software is not because of the scaling op option, it's because they added recently, like a couple of months, three months ago, an option called uh, frame generation, essentially. So what it does is essentially the same as FSR3 or DLSS3. Well, or at least it tries. Obviously, it cannot do the same exactly because um, they don't work in, with the GPU, with the game itself. So it's basically using the, the frame and interpolating them. But many people swear by it. I never wanted to test it because it costs money. And I thought there is no point, but because so pe many people insisted that it was so good, I wanted to try it myself. So I ended up buying it and testing it. And well, I'm going to show some of the results and opinions, and then I will come back with my conclusion. And here we can see the first problem lossless introduced. And on the left, we see the 60 FPS real version running. And on the right, we see the 30 to 60 FPS using lossless. And as you can see, the problem is that it doesn't detect the change of scene, which creates this garble of two okay, frames together. And as you can see, it's also a little bit deformed because of what apparently the um, algorithm does is trying to morph each frame to make it more seamless. But in this case, obviously, there is no possibility when they are completely different frames to show or to do this. Now here, I'm, le I'm leaving you this little demonstration, completely synchronized of one real 30 FPS, uh, the middle one real 60 FPS, and the third one 30 FPS to 60. So you can evaluate by yourself if you see any difference or a smoothness compared between them. In this case of a, a Plague Tale Requiem, on the left side we have the real 60 FPS game running at perfect 60 FPS. On the right we have the 30 FPS running 
uh, to, from 30 to 60 using lossless. And the first thing you can see is that the left side looks much, much smoother than the right side. And one of the reasons I think is that when I was recording and checked both records, what happens is that on the 60 FPS side, you can move frame by frame and see a change of frame every single frame because it's running at 60 FPS on a recorded 60 FPS video. By doing the same on the left, on the right side, I was maybe I'm not recording correctly, but that's not the case because as it happens, the game, if you move frame by frame, you can get three to four to five different frames, but then like a repeated frame, then three more new frames and then another repeated frame, which means there is some problem on the lossless side that is not always generating a new frame in between. Sometimes either by time or whatever reason, it just repeats the frame. And of course, this will never create a smooth thing. If you can see, you can see it right here on the movement on the right side, it's a lot more jerky than it is on the left side, especially when it moves sideways. You can see the characters like going from this uh, jerky movement to a smooth move movement. So there is something weird going on with the lossless, which is smoother than 30 FPS, but at the same time, it's not as good as 60. And I'll dare that this jankiness may resolve even being the 30 FPS better. Now here you can see it. If you see on the light lateral movement on the most uh, um, separated uh, right and left, you can see the walls and things moving. So on the next wall coming here, you're going to see how the transition going from smooth to not smooth at all. Do you see? When I say not smooth at all, I don't mean that it's completely uh, wrong, but it's not as smooth as 60 and it doesn't really seem to convey that sensation of 60 FPS or motion flow that we're expecting here. Now I'm comparing the same thing using a 30 FPS cap on the left side and then a 30 to FPS. Uh, to 60 on lossless and th the reason to do this is just to show you that it doesn't seem that there is a lot of gain from using lossless in, even if if you have a perfect pace in 30 fps game as you can see on the right it still look a little bit chunky but if you check frame by frame you're going to see that they do change between one and the other and that's the weird part of all of this but my curiosity was taking me a little bit further. I wanted to understand exactly what was going on. So in this case, you are seeing the game running at 50 FPS um, uh, and double using lossless. And as you can see here, and this is a normal speed, the games look quite, you know, weird, um, morphing and doing all sort of weird stuff. But of course, this is me just using the software for what it's not supposed to. But the only reason I did this is because I wanted to understand what happened exactly. So then I went and did the same, but now using a slow and recorded at 240 FPS. And this is what I saw. You can see here, it tries to morph each frame into the next, duplicate it in many cases. You see that uh, co orange column there, um, so that's supposed to be part of the building that they're constructing, but you can see that it's being duplicated every time you move for some reason. Uh, well, not for some reason, we know why, but the, the thing is that it's duplicating a lot of the stuff um, because there, of course, at uh, 15 FPS, there is a lot of movement between frames. But it's still weird uh, from my point of view that is uh, doing this. And, and so that may explain why it never feels really right. Now we go here and now I'm using 30 FPS to 60, which is, you know, more supposed to be for what you want to use or try to use the software. And the, the things you can see is that the UI, in this case, the reticule, the, that thing that Spider-Man uses to point, it's getting duplicated and it's vibrating and getting all junky because it's duplicating, as I said, when it doesn't know what to do with the elements or try to combine them, because obviously this is a special um, frame duplicator instead of like the ones that DLSS 3 or FSR creates, then it's just not morphing right. And if you see the particles or the, the snow, you can see that there is always like a second particle on the background that is, you know, like following the main one because it creates that issue where another particle is created because it's just not blending correctly. And once again, that orange column in there 
uh, a metal column is being duplicated by every movement you do. So it's getting like, there is always like something following something else behind and joining on the next frame, which may be part of the reason why it gets so janky. And here you can see it really creates a lot of issues and garble image from my point of view. And now I'm going to show you the same, but at 30 FPS, real 30 FPS, so you can see the difference. Um, as you can see here, to, to begin with the UI, in this case, the reticle that the Spider-Man uses to um, uh, you know, point to things, doesn't get duplicated at any point. Also, the particles of the snow are always unique. Every move, they are on a different position, every movement, and that's it. There is not a second particle following. And the orange column is right there, not being duplicated at all. Uh, here, we don't have the weirdness that it creates when it's trying to morph between frames, as you can see here. They are perfectly visible and not creating any sort of issues. The blinking of that you can see is just part of the re uh, is just because of the uh, recording that I'm doing to the screen with the phone. It's not because it's been created by that. But as you can see, it's much, much better and it looks so much better than it even looks um, from uh, using lossless. So I'm not quite sure I will do all those problems introduced just to give a sense of better frame rate or better, um, you know, or, or a, a smoothness that is, I don't think it's actually there to be honest. But now I'm going to take it this to like a more usable case, which is going from 60 to 120. So there is so many frames that is probably going to be much better and you're going to notice it a lot less. You can see that the uh, uh, column is still duplicated, but you are not able to see it that much. Here, um, we still have some vibrations and some morphing going on, but because it's so fast, we are probably not going to notice as much because you can even see that the Spider-Man UI is still being wrong. And look at the hands. The hands, even at this speed, you can see them vibrating. And that is going to be very visible even while playing because that, you know, you're going to see something is wrong. And when that starts to happen is when you start to lose the smoothness of the image. And that's why I, I'm i not quite convinced by this system. They may be use cases, I don't know, maybe to watch a movie because you can basically duplicate anything you want. If you want to get that, you know, I don't know, soap opera effect or something. I, I'm not sure. But the thing is that I'm not quite convinced by this software as much as many people say that this is great and it looks amazing. I am not convinced. As you can see, the way the software works is like morphing one image to the other. This brings some issues because the software first is taking the final image. Okay, so that means that the UI and everything is going to be uh, generated by next frames, but also it doesn't recognize when there is a change of scene, which means it's going to try to blend that scene with the next one that has nothing to do with it. Um, of course, this is unavoidable, and even on FSR3 and DLSS at the beginning, they had this issue, which has been solved now, but they don't, But this software doesn't do that, doesn't recognize it. Also, the software recommends you to cap the frame to whatever it is that you want to double. For example, if you want to double to 60, then to cap the frame at 30. So you gain, because this is going to use a little bit of that GPU power, probably needs to go to around 40 FPS to activate this to go to 60. So I am not sure if I will prefer to just play a 40 FPS than use this option to go from 30 to 60. Because as we saw, the morphing creates a lot of artifacts and weird shapes while it's moving, uh, especially when it's moving in fast in low frame rates. Maybe when you're playing a 60 and trying to move the game to 120 because the steps are different and depending on the type of game, it's going to make a less of obvious uh, effect but there are many games where I will definitely not recommend lots of scaling. It gives you the sensation that it's faster, but it's at the same time, it's not as fast as you think it should. Like you say, okay, this is this seems to look smoother, but it's not that smooth. I mean, it's not like going from 30 to 60 on this software makes you feel like it's 60. It makes you feel like it's uh, less 
an optimal 60. It's kind of weird to explain, but it never felt like that. Well, with FSR3 and DLSS3, you actually feel the uh, smoothness. Like, okay, this is a more smooth. This does feel much better. With this, the images there are kind of, but it doesn't really feel like it. So I'm not quite sure I will recommend this software, me particularly. I know there is a lot of people that swear by it, and I understand that. Um, you know, if you don't have a GPU with a support for FSR3 or DLSS3, obviously this is better than nothing. And I would say in some cases it is, but in other cases it's not. So the problem for me is that you have to pay for this. So is, is it worth it? Is it worth the $8 for the software? Well, it depends. If you're going to use also the lossless scaling option it has to try to improve the uh, resolution of the games, like if you're going to play like on a, a 1080p on a 1440p monitor and you get, it's not as good obviously as DLSS or FSR2, but at least you get a little bit of extra sharpness, crispness that is going to help in some cases. And if you play a lot of like uh, pixel, um, a pixel art game and you know you want to scale them perfectly is going to also help you a lot so you're going to use all the functions plus frame generation in some instances you know maybe it's a tool to have you know it could continue to improve the author may create better options for it and so on so it could be okay but if you are really like thinking that this is going to magically make your games look 60 fps is you're coming from 30 then I don't think so. Now, if you're playing on 60 and want to go to up to 120, it's more usable because there is some less difference between frames and the uh, and the game is uh, and the and the software is able to interpolate better because the distance is not so much. But as I said, the problem is the UI, the change in scene. Of course, 120 FPS, you're probably not going to notice that. Or if you're playing at 120 FPS and want to use your 240 Hz monitor at the top, it's probably going to be the best options. But remember, this: the more frames you generate, the more this game, this software is also going to use in terms of power. So maybe you need to find the balance. So yeah, it's a hard to recommend. I I particularly wouldn't have bought it uh, um, for myself because I don't think it does anything for me, and I don't think it's as good as some people say but i can understand in some cases where you know as i said people may not get the newest gpu may not have it and say oh, i would like this to look a little bit better and that's fine and the other thing is that this work with almost anything so you can even use it for like even videos if you're watching a video at 34 24 fps you can double that frame rate and maybe give it that soap opera effect that nobody likes but the point is that you can use this software for more than just games so um like uh, emulation retro games and so on so as i said there are uses so maybe it's worth eight dollars for you but if the whole point is to use frame generation to double the frame rates on games i would only recommend it if you are going to play from 60 to 120 because at least from my point of view going from 30 to 60 doesn't work and you may say well it doesn't work on the lss or fsr 3 either but it does i think it does th those systems do a much better job i have played games at 30 fps using frame generation for 60 and honestly they feel decent enough but i didn't feel the same with this software so well that's my take on the uh, lossless scaling system i don't know what you think about it um it, have you used it do you like it um I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, you enjoy it, please uh, subscribe and like and see you on the next one.